you were here early even. <laughs> early? Maybe even. You were the first only, one. Only two minutes late today. Yeah, I was a couple minutes late too. I was on HR this morning. They've done a a week, I think, on creativity, which was has been really fun. Creativity? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. How does um that group come to that topic? Uh somebody says I want to do something on it, and they do. Sure, I guess like yeah. The there was a poorly worded question. Um, I guess what what's the take on creativity, or what was the um the well they covered all sorts of aspects, um, creativity and healing, um, agency, uh, technology, um, yeah. So each day was different in the week. Mm. And today was talking about technology, so. Um, a wonderful lady, um, Laura, let me see what her last name is. Is Isima is Sarah and Laura and Sarah, who does sound. Um, and she's got this wonderful room with a very fluffy white rug, and then all these instruments, flutes and gongs and a hand pan, um, some things with no name. <laughs> and she just walks into this space and creates sounds and hums along with it um just lovely stuff lovely stuff and then we mm. were talking about ai and is it a, is it does it foster creativity or limit creativity and her her input was something that i really resonated with it is that it it, it can support but it in itself it's a limitation because it takes you out of the reality of you which is where, which is truly inf infinite, and puts you into a very constrained environment, which can be supportive in different ways, but it's not generative in the same way that reality or life is. So. Hmm. Good morning. Good morning, Ani. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Good morning. Yeah, I think Robert will not be here, as I remember. Yeah, you said that last week. Yeah. 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 Which is a good reminder for me to say that I think the next few weeks I most likely won't be um either I'm traveling and um it's very likely it'll be tough to tough to yeah, fit it in. So don't be surprised well, for the next few weeks. Have a good time. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Business or pleasure? Mm, mostly or pleasure. Mostly oh, nice. pleasure. Um, going to have, yeah, basically a week in San Fran, um, a weekend in just over the border of Mexico, and then a week in um, the San Diego area. Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. At some point, I would like to the three of us to do an attunement that we may be in the same vibrational heart centered whenever you're finished chewing. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Um, to just bring our hearts and our minds together in support of life on Earth and of humanity's conscious evolution, because we need to intervene in our own thinking, in our own values, in our own what we put first. Um, so I just, I just, if just holding our hearts together and our minds together in support of humanity's consciousness 
in support of humanity's um, openness to love, openness to goodness, openness to helping, openness to supporting our own species and life on earth and to keep that before us at all times in this dangerous time, in this transitional period of human evolution. May Barbara Marks Hubbard's teachings come forth, consciousness come forth, that we would be good stewards of the power and intelligence and love that we have and that we are. And so it is. Yeah, I think we can do better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe uh, there's no need to do better in terms of the words you just spoke, though. Um, that was beautiful. I feel like, I feel like uh, that would be nice for other people to read somewhere. Um, what? What? what the words. You the words you just spoke. Thank you. Yeah, I'll. I'm. I'm. I'm moving into that space because it's apparent to me that intervention is um, appropriate now in our thinking, in in our consciousness, and I'll. You, you know, so I'm just trying to start with myself. I, uh, there's a, a video by Barbara Marks Hubbard in 2015. I could get the link of that and start spread, spreading it around because she's the one that termed um, this new way of thinking, conscious evolution. And Ka Catherine, I, uh, I know that you're aware of, of her, of, of her teaching, of you were involved when she was on the earth in in what she had to say. So whatever you have to say. Oh, just very peripherally. Um, my only real connection was her when was when I was speaking at the World Future Society and she came in to hear what I was talking about leadership. And she said, keep doing what you're doing. That, that's my sum total experience of Barbara Marks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, you're doing good, Catherine. <laughs> you are. So keep doing it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I I just kind of came to it this morning, watching television, the news. It's like, God, we have to stop. Yeah. And look at what we're doing. Be self-reflective in this 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 cerebral addition <laughs> that that we've been given i came across a um a video this morning and it was actually offered up by a friend as well uh on the hopi take on the eclipse oh what and so what they say is that the sun and the moon are conversing and that we should leave them in their privacy to do that. Oh, I like it. it. There is a loveliness about it. And at the same time, there's part of me that says there is a learning gain by watching. To really understand what you're looking at is, for me, incredibly awesome. That we're looking at bodies in space doing things. I, it's just astounding. So there's a tension between this understanding of respect, which is 
beautiful and precious and this desire to learn and experience, which I also value. I don't know what to say about it more than that, that this, there's something to be gained, I feel, by seeing that tension and being able to understand how to integrate it as opposed to keeping them very separate and going back and forth, which is kind of what I think we do now. That how, do, how do they come together in some way that um, values the reverence we feel over here and the depth of understanding that we get here that's different. One of the things that, that I turn myself on with is consciousness that, 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 that we are cosmic in origin, that the planet Earth itself and us as, as beings of the substance of Earth, I mean, we, we are cosmic in, in origin. So, if we could just open ourselves to embrace the totality, <laughs> the majesty of creation, of life, we would have a different world. It's awesome. So how do you see that majesty of life reflected in the Hopi understanding of respect and privacy? The Hopi understanding of respecting. Of respect and privacy that that, that little vignette characterizes. I, I didn't get the vignette. So the Hopis would say that because the eclipse is a private conversation between the sun and the moon, that we should not be out watching it. We should leave them to their privacy. I don't accept, I, I, I don't relate to that at all. I don't resonate with that in any way, shape or form. We, we, we are stardust. We are physically stardust. I mean, the cosmic origin of all that we know and of all that we walk on, of all that we bathe every day. I, I mean, the sun, I mean, we, we are stardust. We, we originated as stardust. Evolution is real. <laughs> Life evolves. The cosmos evolves. So, 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 how did, so how does how does the cosmos evolving um, impact your understanding of the Hopi sense of rever reverence and privacy? I don't get the I I don't understand the privacy part. What, well, what? the privacy part from the Hopis is not to pay attention to the eclipse because it's a private conversation. That's ridiculous. It should be respected as such. It's ridiculous. It's archaic. It's not intelligent. It's 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 not in recognition of the oneness of everything. So And and I, where, I so 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 that so what I'm pulling out of that that way of looking at things is the sense of respect um, that so permeates so much of the indigenous wisdom. There's very much a sense of respect for the kin, for the other, and everything is treated in that way. Yes. And that privacy is an aspect of that respect. Privacy. Unpack that word in relation to the cosmic reality of our living, of our of life. Well, and that's where the tension is. There, um, and I think this is true in science, just in our whole scientific lineage, also, this issue of respect and science. 
there's always been there's a tension there because we tear things apart to look at them well that's stupid it's not stupid it's how we've gotten where we're gotten if we hadn't done that we wouldn't be where we are but so side of the wholeness and interconnectivity of everything that's well, the context but right. we have learned by tearing things apart by fragmenting stuff I love not respecting that bond. And I mean, that's the tension. That's exactly the tension. That's where conscious evolution comes in. That, that's where humanity as a species maturing, because all of the founders of, of the language of conscious evolution are saying it's an evolutionary we're evolving life is evolving so what does that look like how did that's exactly what i'm looking for so if we're evolving we've got this brilliance of fragmentation that has done some wonderful things and we've got this reverential connection which keeps life thriving how do you put them together how where what do you do with those two pieces? Bring them together with your attention and contemplation. You, you know, I, I I don't see them in, in conflict at all. I oh, mean, I do, because I think it really says at times that you cannot do certain things we have done. And we have to say no to some things. And yeah. so the question for me is how do you understand and define that boundary? so that we can be appropriate in that tension that know that sometimes we do say no we keep that privacy we do not go there i don't we understand do. the privacy you're talking about that it's a kind of not knowing it's a kind of leaving it's different than privacy <laughs> no <laughs> it's privacy. You're, you're 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 putting something at a distance yes you're not knowing something and you're you're agreeing to not know something you're letting it lie fallow by choice well we we can't do that that that's not what we that. have to i think we have to learn to do that because that's part of the problem we've not been willing to let things be if we see it, we cannot stop but putting our finger in it <laughs> we've got to mess around with it. And what I'm feeling the call is, is to learn to say no, to know how to do that in a way that maintains this reverential feeling and not get so caught up in our own will, our own, there's just, I'm not really getting good words for this, but I just feel this tension. I feel it in myself. Um, the, the willful choice to not go there, to not do things, and to feel comfortable in that space, not, not denied or thwarted, but to understand the appropriateness of allowing things to be. And that is not a skill that I think we really have. <laughs> and I'm not sure actually that the indigenous, they've sort of, a, in my perception, it appears that they've avoided that conversation actually by never going there through a worldview that keeps them in the reverential place. And I think there's a challenge now to see if that reverential space can grow to be participatory as opposed to just witnessing. And and that's very dicey yes. <laughs> from a Western perspective because we're really used to participating. We don't think anything of participating. We're just there. We're, we're part of it. We don't honor the other necessarily we participate by overbearing not by being humble in that participation um, I, I i think i understand what you're saying and and to me it's almost as simple as the difference between adolescence and adulthood 
and our maturation as a species on earth, as hu humanity, be because we can be pretty egocentric, like you're saying, okay? Mm -hmm. And it's, 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 it's a matter of choice of practice. It's a matter of self-reflection. That's, that's why this frontal lobe was the last addition to our brain. This is self-reflection. Mm -hmm. we, we, we have not been encouraged socially uh, because we're the ones that determine socialization, but we haven't, we haven't mastered the art of self-reflection yet and conscious evolution because it lies within us. And it's a simple thing of maturation and willingness to, first of all, admit that we're not all that. <laughs> we're, we're not all, you know, we're, we're, not, we're not mature yet. So and, let's talk genetics. <laughs> we have this thing called a CRISPR. Um, it's a machine that can cut up genetic material and recombine it in new ways. Why go, so, there? Why go there when we don't even know what the hell we're doing? We don't even know what the hell we are and where we've come from. And what is our, what is our calling on so This is part of the question. So we don't know some of those things. And yet we now have the capacity to get rid of, of course, some of the genetic traits that we find uncomfortable um some of the diseases what i'm saying what so i, I should we you know where's where's the respect where's the evolving um is it something that we should as humans try and create a space for other humans to not suffer in those ways or should we just let that be until we feel we have more respect and understanding for genetics? If we don't attend to our how we think, if we don't attend to our consciousness, to, to being conscious of the interconnectivity and interdependence of everything. Focus it on that egocentric crap that of course we can be capable of doing all this shit, but we don't even have our, we, we're not even self-reflective yet. So try- so I'm, to, not, I'm not arguing that we're not self-reflective. What I'm trying to, to understand better is is it is that the fact that we feel we are not self-reflective enough? And there's a question about who feels, and we could go there. But we don't just a that. we don't even consider that it it hasn't even. Well, if we up. did, if we did, then what would be the response to science doing things like that? Would we say it's not allowed at this time? You're 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 putting the cart before the horse by even at, in that question well the horse is out of the barn the question is what do you do about it i mean it's the same with ai in a way i there's there's a here i sense I that that there's a tool in ai that can do some really interesting things what we've done however is turned it loose with with no constraints it's available for anybody, any idiot can train it in any way it wants to and leave it out in the field for other AIs to find and therefore play with. So there's no constraints on that at all. Um, so that's kind of what we've done. Gee, we can do this, so let's do it. And we've thrown it out. So okay. what I like to from your perspective, saying that we aren't reflective. We don't understand what it can really do. We see the potential and we're more excited about the ten potential than the issues. And we're not managing the issues. Therefore, we should not do it until we understand how to manage the issues. 
Would that be a correct statement? The leading statement for me is energy flows where attention goes. It's not time to put our attention on how to do all that stuff you're saying when we don't even, when we're not even mature enough yet to be self-reflective. So all I'm saying is let's, let's empower what would be most helpful by giving our attention and languaging and reflection to that rather than what I hear you doing is taking something that is awful and looking at it and, and explaining it. Don't even go there to me because we want to, we energy flows where attention goes. We want to empower humanity's conscious evolution, not all that other crap. So my job, like I'm doing here on this call, is to turn our attention to our own maturation first and foremost, because until we have that, we can't make good decisions. Okay, and, and now I want to go back to the moon again, because <laughs> the, the thrilling piece for me of the eclipse is the understanding of what I'm watching. Two bodies in space. I had a meditation at one point, thanks to um, Werner Erhardt, actually, um, where I was literally in space and I got to truly experience what it's like to see those huge planets sitting in nothing. <laughs> totally not, i mean there's like no there's just it they're just sitting there you know yeah and in it's space. all balanced and it's all interconnected and that is just an awesome thing it is see. awesome and i'm not sure that i would have that experience without science because it took being able to get off the planet to be able to see it in an interesting way. So that separation gave me an insight I would not have in any other way. And it connected me in a very interesting way at the same time. That's the experience of the astronauts who, yeah, who have walked exactly. on the moon. Exactly. And I think to wander back to genes again, understanding the, and, and we don't yet, we're just, we've just discovered them basically, just understood that piece of our anatomy and being able to step back enough to watch and see how that works is quite awesome. And has given lots of new insight into who we are as human beings, the role of agency in getting those genes to express is quite incredible. And I think the more we get to that, the more we'll understand the capacity we have to change our bodies by our thoughts, which I've had some experience of. So I know it's possible. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and we're not paying much attention to that, but it is there. <laughs> I mean, the tools are are starting to show up there. So there's there is something about separation which is important. And to not acknowledge that and to treasure that becomes a limitation. And I'm yet to to see that as the only capacity is also a limitation. It cuts off half of reality there because they're both there. It's a both and. I'm 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 not quite getting 
what it is you're trying to highlight. I'm trying to highlight a way of thinking about the ethics of using technology and the mind in a world of heart. What's your question or your statement? How to, how to define, how to understand the um, ethical way of living and acting in a world that contains both separation and connection. If we are aware, if we are, when I am conscious, when I am self-reflective, when I am in touch with my vibration as a being, I, I have agency. I, I, I lost the thread of the question. Um, I'm, the body, the human body is more evolved than the human brain. Okay, this frontal lobe is kind of a new add-on thing. You know, we had bodies before we had the executive function. <laughs> our bodies are more evolved if we pay attention to our bodies our bodies know something that our brain doesn't know so and it, when i when i pay attention to my vibration to the i don't know the language yet of how to explain or express self awareness <laughs> but it's a vibrational, cohering kind of experience, and let that guide me. I'm, I'm, I'm on track. If if I'm trying to figure things out with my brain, I can't do it. It doesn't have the capacity. My body is more evolved than my brain, and so is everybody else's. It, it's, it's, it's an evolutionary phenomenon. So what I'm hearing and what, I, and what you're saying um, takes me to art. And in the creative process, you kind of play around with things until it feels right. And there's a bodily sensation in that. You just yeah. know that it's yeah. right. And when you honor that, then the piece has a life. Yes. That, um, Others can resonate with that. Beautiful. So if we applied that to science, that would seem to me that there needs to be... Um... Can, can I stop you before you... If, if, if we apply that to science, I would suggest you say, if we apply science to that, if, if we apply science to the understanding, that then we can, we can get down to the nitty gritty of the coherence. Well, I'm looking for the ethics of the situation. And I think the ethics are often driven by our bodies because our bodies know what's right and ha give us a sense of appropriateness. Yes. But we don't get in any other way. Um, so that's why I want to apply art to science. Because I think the and I've heard scientists of different stripes kind of say this, that it's a spiritual experience for them. There's an awe, there's a reverence that, that comes as they understand, they begin to see the connections and feel that. Yes, me too. And yet in so much of what we call science now, and I'm going back to the genes and the CRISPR stuff, a lot of that is driven not so much by curiosity and reverence as by how can we make a buck? <laughs> oh yeah, that that that's why we don't pay attention to that because yeah. energy flows where attention goes. We don't want to give that energy. We want to give energy to what wants to evolve, to manifest, to evolve, right. to mature. So perhaps um 
coming back to that body sense, giving um, credence to the response that a scientist would have in their work to the feeling that something is not right or appropriate and giving space for that person to have the space to find the proper approach, whatever feels right, and to honor that space. I mean, we don't right now, it would be totally dismissed. It's like you're talking about gut feelings, but you know, we've got these things that we have to fulfill and just shove it. Um, so, so switching that attention, as you say, to more resonance with that, to being able to honor that space with people and to have patience with that space, which is another thing we don't have a whole lot of, um, to give it time to bloom in the way it wants to bloom <clears throat> instead of forcing it. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not clear on your frame of reference and the point that you're trying to make that that will help create what you know in your body is desired of life. I think what where I've gone is to think about a system that honors that capacity in humans as opposed to dismissing it. And that that by more strongly integrating um an adaption to that feeling making that feeling the driver not other external things right. that is a way of maintaining that integrity it, and it, a blend it seems of, like to me that you're focusing on a framework that is outside of the human condition when, when it is the human condition I don't think it's outside of the human condition. I think it's what creates the human condition, whether we're sensitive to that sense of um, integrity that our bodies reflect or not, whether we override it with all sorts of other well, good things that we think about and roles and yeah. all those other necessities. The, I mean, the human condition, it works is capable i mean is is designed to work the human condition is where it comes from is it the human condition is the only place we can come from to interact with all the rest of what is so we yeah. have to honor this we have to be aware of this we have to reflect on this we have to we have to be smart about it i mean i mean we have to our bodies know, you know, we're putting our attention in all kinds of crappy places that don't help anything. Well, the rest of the world doesn't help, doesn't support us in that. I you don't know, care. It, yeah, well, I mean, you know, if you got the rent to pay on the first of the month, you got the rent to pay in the first of the month. That's and if you don't feel that. like it, that doesn't really work. You're you're externalizing, putting it in a, in a framework that that we can only we can only affect from within the system that we are in relation to it all. We're here for a reason. The human species is here is amazing and is here for a reason, and and it's a good reason. And if we pay attention to our body's feedback, we can do all kinds of wonderful things and, and, and create conditions conducive to life. What else is it, what's, what's more important than that? What to focus on, give our attention to other than that when we have the opportunity to go forward with this with who we are. We're magnificent. We're, we're magnificently constructed. We didn't make ourselves this way. 
but oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. we can be guided by the natural design. Oops. What? So I, I lost, I heard we can be guided and the rest of it. By, I did not. We can be guided by our natural design. If we pay attention to our our body's feedback. <laughs> yeah, and I'm trying to to explore that and how that looks in real life with real life problems because we still no, have no, to pay no, the rent. Do it in you first. I beg your pardon? Do it in you first. Don't external don't externalize it and try to manage it out. Well, I that is how I live. Right. But that's not that doesn't help other people figure it out for themselves. And there are there are certain questions um, like CRISPR, uh, like AI, that I think really hit on those exact issues. And we are confounded by them. We we chew on them. We sense the tension. We sense the rightness and the wrongness in those situations. And we have no way to talk about it, except blame um, and responsibility. And that's not really effective because when people are blamed, they get defensive and they don't hear anything. And it doesn't help us feel comfortable in our feelings. It makes us uncomfortable in our feelings because we feel that it's not right, but we can't put it into words. We can't articulate it. And it makes us feel powerless and helpless. I think the more clarity we can bring to why why it is ethically inappropriate to do something, the more likely we are to not do it. And I, making rules to say you can't do this or you shouldn't do this. Mark? This has been such a treat. Um, hearing you guys uh, talk through this and it's allowed me to kind of like maybe in some ways like synthesize a few things so I kind of feel a bit rude sort of like tacking on at the end but like um, I would mostly say I'm aligned with the the core of what um, Ani is saying and I would invite letting go of the words privacy and separation and I think there might have been a third one but certainly letting go of those two things I don't think they're helpful um what I think is underneath it though that is really important is can kind of be phrased or captured by the cliche like like knowing what is ours to do in the system mm -hmm. so like um I don't think we need privacy, but at the same time, it's inappropriate to be doing things outside of what is ours to do, especially if it comes from an insufficient mm -hmm. awareness to do that thing. Mm -hmm. So there is a very real need in a system for our action taking to be like proportionate to our awareness or our knowing. Yep. And so that is to say there's absolutely no reason coming back to the moon example that we shouldn't be witnessing that event because it does have a material and energetic impact on us. So it's very relevant to us, but it's not to say that we're going to do something materially with respect to the moon or the sun, because that's not our work to do. Right. However, the things that we are doing on earth for us and our community that has in some ways or receives or is in some ways impacted by the event, like that's very important. Um, like when it comes to CRISPR, for instance, like that's just the most insane thing ever for the main reason that we're trying to do something with an insufficient awareness and knowledge to do it. So that's why CRISPR is horrendous and we should stop immediately. However, there is sort of a flip side of that, which is like keeping our actions within that realm of what is ours to do 
based on what we know. And you can kind of go sort of a few ways through that, which is to say that part of wisdom is knowing what we can know and keeping our actions proportionate to that. And if we're going to be taking actions, seeking the knowledge that we must have to be able to, to do them. So like in some ways this explains, and for me at least, everything. Like in, in, in many ways, the big problem with science is that in many ways, like at some point when we went beyond trying to know things to trying to know things to take actions with that knowledge that moved our world or the system in a direction we wanted, what we were missing there is that the tool of science wasn't giving us enough knowledge to inform our action taking that could mean that we're doing systems beneficial actions and therefore advancing flourishing in the cosmological system that we're a part of um mm -hmm. and but but having said that though like because we did naively and ignorantly like and have and still are participating in the science project we are inadvertently learning things that means that we can do things and because we do those things we can access more awareness than we previously had but in some ways like we didn't know what we're going to get out of them because we didn't have the awareness to know that beforehand so for instance like we were really like naive and ignorant around this whole thing about going to the moon in a space shuttle, like the most mechanistic thing that we could probably ever do, which is, is like a single outcome thing that we just figured out the complicated pathway to, to execute, execute and do. But by doing so, we got for the very first time, you know, the blue marble images and we got to see ourselves in a way that, has made a massive difference to the whole pathway of humanity. We didn't know that was going to happen. We didn't know the impact on us emotionally and energetically. But because we did that, like for a completely different objective, we got this thing from an awareness and knowing perspective that can, with wisdom, inform our action taking so that over time our action taking does get to the point in the future where that is more in line with the larger project that is ours to do as a human species, but as a member of a, you know, one member of a human, of other species, that means that us as an individual and groups and as a species is contributing to this larger movement of the cosmos through our access point to it, which is a biological organizational level of complexity, plus the psychological organizational complexity and the technology, um, level of organizational complexity that we've been able to do because of because of us and what we've co-emerged to be so in many ways it just all sounds very like exciting and confirming to me and very helpful to sort of be able to say uh, yes this is something that is ours to do this is not and 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 the last word that i would cross out that i don't think is useful was ethics because like we might we might want based on a human human centricity to see in the living world system this thing that we might want to call ethics but we would be misguided because what we're actually seeing in that is an expression of essence in the manifestation of flourishing within individual members of species and species and a whole ecosystem and interdependency the ethics is basically a human-made construct that we created we co-emerged together as our psychology and technology emerged to essentially because we were ignorant to basically say hey this action is a good action and this is a bad action and by doing so using that as a tool to control the action taking of others because we didn't have the awareness to sort of know intrinsically what actions were supporting the flourishing of self group and humanity 
at the time that the idea of ethics even came about and morals. But we're getting to this point now in terms of consciousness and awareness that we can sort of know ourselves and our work to do that we can potentially let go of ethics because they they are not really the tool that match up the level of awareness that we're sort of burgeoning on. Perfect. Beautiful well said, Mark. Really nice. Good job. And I think that I, I I think it's knowing our work to do and trusting ourselves is the big fallacy, the big hole, because we've created all these other things because we didn't trust ourselves as a way of sort of controlling this thing we didn't trust instead of just trusting it. Yeah. Yeah. This is all we really have. You know, I mean, we've got a lot of extensions that we can mess with. But humanity is a marvelous organism, as is every other organism. Yeah. It's just that we we get to be in this form with the capacity to know stuff or experience stuff, learn stuff. And it's enough. Yeah. Well, and it's discovering what is ours to do. I mean, that's really where we're at. This is the that's fulcrum of, because we've kind of been playing with all the capacities we've discovered we have. We know we have fingers and toes and how marvelous those are. <laughs> but then the question is, what is theirs to do? And what that's where it comes to back do? to trusting ourselves and trusting our relationship with others so that when we feel it's right, we know it's right that is ours to do and when we feel it's wrong it's not ours to do and we let it go because when we when we manage this entity to trust there's a centrality there's a guidance there's yeah. a way. there's a freedom there's a freedom yeah conscious yeah. evolution <clears throat> uh, uh barbara's <laughs> De def definition of conscious evolution in includes the word freedom, complexity, universality. I mean, though those are the some of the words that she she uses about conscious evolution. It's it's like, I mean, nature is beyond our comprehension but not beyond our following. <laughs> yeah. and, and we are nature and we can follow the promptings of our bodies that are intricately made beyond our capacity of knowing or of understanding. Anyway. Yeah, a, yeah. a slight modification to that, Ani. Like I, I agree with the sentiment. I think if I was to sharpen that a little bit, it would be that the full breadth of the complexity of nature is beyond our knowing in specificity. However, it, we are capable to understand the patterns that must be expressing for nature to flourish. And I would be even a little bit more emphatic to say, like, we must do that if we are to move into a sufficiently conscious and sufficiently action-taking individual person group and humanity that is moving us towards flourishing of all of life on this planet and humans being part of it beautiful i'm loving this this is some deep deep doo-doo <laughs> beautiful i and i would would offer too and i'm not sure how to pull all this together in a certain way but I, I agree with you on the ethics, the way we use ethics, which is why it's always bothered me because there are always rules and controlling kinds of things and that it's never, never worked and it's never felt right. So they're definite, but they are patterns. I think values are patterns. Um, and they are patterns of behavior that have certain impacts. Um, so when I look at, and I'd love to, explore this a little more we don't have time to do it today but the um the patterns that i have seen in nature 
um, perform the same actions in creating a context of living that the patterns of values that Jane Jacobs found in human behavior do. So there is, um, from Jane's perspective, there are patterns that create a sense of safety and they're very tribal and they're very us them because it validates that point of view that you should have fear and that this is how you manage that fear when you have it. Um, then the patterns of effectiveness are patterns that are necessary to interact with others in a way that supports um, the continuation of that interaction. And so those patterns do that. Um, and the patterns that I have surfaced in the research that up from others looking at nature are the patterns that nature uses to reinforce the ability to thrive. So the in, the intent is the words we use. I don't know if that's exactly the right phrasing, but it the purpose of the system of values um, has each purpose has patterns that support its ability to exist a structure that makes that context happen. And we've been fearful. We got out of that and got playful in a way, expressive, and that worked. But that's not sufficient because it's not supporting life. It's supporting, again, a very egocentric approach to things and moving away from the the me to an us requires different patterns, which is how I see the the patterns of earth supporting I'm, kind of behavior. I'm I'm not comfortable. I'm I'm uncomfortable with the term that values, just like I'm uncomfortable with the word ethics, because there's so much limited human acumen <laughs> yeah no i and i can understand that yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, that's why i say that the, i'm the equating that word to patterns in this context and i think that's really what we look what we're looking for we're um we haven't understood it as that but i think that's what those values and attributes are those are words that we are using to try and call forth those kinds of repetitive behaviors that are patterns the, the main, ourselves. The linchpin to me for the patterns of nature is a simple word, reciprocity. Reciprocity is key yep. because it's interactive. Yep. It's 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 act and respond. Act and it's 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 re, re, responsive. And I I've come to I've come to see I've come to feel the word reciprocity as a sacred word. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. it embodies the interaction of life that 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 maintains itself, that mm -hmm. expands itself, that that makes things work the way they're designed. Mm -hmm. I would agree. So value I think... ethics I can do without. Reciprocity <laughs> is key. Yeah, I think I'm gonna like just build on that very briefly. Like um like I, I don't sort of naturally like um think ethics and values are the same thing. And so therefore happy to leave ethics aside and my sense is that our values aren't up to us to choose as humans um for, for the movement towards flourishing the if we are to take on values in service of moving towards flourishing the only values that achieve that are those that all of the living world system define and so like if that is if that yep. is a series of logic, then I would like simply scribble out the head header on the top of the framework that I have instead of like the requirements for flourishing or for life, I would say 
the values for um and that yeah. and that's kind of the thing is like that that's why i use the phrase like deepening our awareness acceptance and understanding of the fundamentals of the living world system because that is to say that it is ours to like become aware of these values and a deep knowing and therefore accepting or committing to acting from them yep. and having the sufficient understanding of them to act from them so that our actions that we're taking moment by moment, day by day, are actions which bring forward flourishing in the living world system from our place in it as an individual person or our place in it as a member of a group. Mark, have you looked at my work at all? Yeah, yeah you've sh you've shared um, you've shared a couple of things, and I, I do recall you using that word values. Um, you remember the the picture of a a woman in a tree, basically, or a person in a tree. Is that the one that has like sort of is it four or six that, things with like four words under each one, or yeah, kind of one? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't think it, I've seen it in its full form. I think I've only seen it partially. I, I haven't oh. seen it. Yeah, you I have. have. I have. Yeah. Uh, so let me share my screen. Uh, oh, well, I can't do that yet. Let me go find it. So I would love to have you look at this and then tell me what you think. So I can put it into the chat, actually. Didn't you see that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I can see it all apart from maybe the bottom word on underneath the resilience tab. It's sort of hidden behind. Um, so behind. the bottom word is ecologies. Got it. See, when, when, when I see this, I interpret it that you're saying that the earth that it's earth's values like it like, is like earth is conscious and these are the values that it uses these are the patterns we see that the earth does does that help that helps oh that helps a lot that does it you you need that you need to say that here because i that by itself. I do. They're not mine. I don't create them or anything else. This is what we see the earth does. No, I'm saying it's not me see either. I'm saying your statement brings it, your statement expresses it better to me. I mean, your, your statement, I get it. Looking at this, I don't. But, but your, say your statement again. Well, I don't know. Uh, how to say that except that these these are this is what we see earth does <clears throat> this is what earth does the these are the ways we understand but what the earth it, does it, you're calling it's it's actions and attributes values so say patterns if that's more comfortable okay earth patterns is more comfortable yes yes yeah. Very nice then. That that's comprehensive. Yeah. So to your question, um, Catherine, yeah. Um I will have another look at this and um and uh yeah, see where that leads leads me. Yeah, I've I have found it in incredible to meditate on. 
it just takes me in incredible places to be able to experience each of those and to see how it permeates life is truly revolutionary and revelatory. If you were to um and this might not be this might not resonate this question, but if you were to like say under the evolution category where there's the four four pieces to that, would you sort of do it like evolution dash agency evolution dash co-creation evolution dash optimization or which is to say like these things are part of evolution or would you think about it kind of at the other end of the spectrum which is agency leads to evolution co-creation leads like how do you think about that do you think about it one of those two ways or a third way um, what I have found when I walk through these things is that they don't stay under right. the place Understood. where you put them. They all right. interact mm -hmm. and they all, so it's quite arbitrary Sure, okay. and, and they have shifted over time. They seem to be fairly settled right now where they are, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say they would stay there. Um, but there is a tendency to say that in order for evolution or continuity or resilience to happen these patterns need to be manifest yeah what? so there there's a, a co-creation in there it's not a one it's not a linear totally. direct system yeah you can't say that yeah Kat, Catherine, would mm -hmm. you be willing to consider replacing the word values in the center there earth values to Earth's patterns. Sure, no problem. Do please. I, I've done that. I can't change this graphic because I don't have the capability on it. But yes, I do. I actually have a T-shirt that says that is this with Earth patterns on it. Um, but the the center. I mean, I can't change the graphic, so I'm kind of stuck with that That's at this okay, point. I can get the, it changed. Yeah, the but, the concept yeah. is alive. I mean, the yeah. concept is you can do yeah. stuff with. Yeah, yeah, because Earth, Earth patterns, because values is such a human centric word, and sometimes that's useful to get people's attention. Yeah, but so I'm not unopposed to it for that reason. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, but the conversation needs to be bigger. But that's a way to get into that conversation, as opposed to having a separate conversation, um, to really change that understanding, instead of creating something different out here so you have the two things together i would like to as mark said kind of transpose into what it really is but going from where we are which is why i talk about ethics and stuff because there's a, a sense of appropriateness and rightness that comes with ethics and while we have tried to force that question um it is about what works and what doesn't work and this works and the other stuff doesn't work. So not making it wrong, but inappropriate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the thing I'd add to that, like it works for right now, but or it in won't, certain places. Yeah, it won't it won't get us all of the way. And yeah. so it's kind of like it's yes. that that's kind of why it's so important to hold all of these things lightly and have them. Because essentially, like the movement towards a flourishing world is coincident with us letting go of the idea of ethics. Like, and at the same it, time, uh, what I keep getting caught in, Mark, and sorry for in the interruption, but is the the patterns of those old behaviors are still with us. And we don't recognize even those patterns, frankly. When the understanding of, and I'm going to use the values word here, the understanding of values as systems, which was Jane Jacobs' insight, is so profound. And when you understand the two value systems that are have hooked us and, and supported us for our entire existence, I think it's useful because those are still resonant in our bodies, frankly. When we're fearful, we want somebody to take care of us. That is a natural response. And that leads to the craziness we're seeing in the magna, folks. 
if you don't recognize that pattern, you have no control over it. You're just at the effect of it. So I often find when I really talk about this, there's a point at which I want to go, wait, you got to understand these so you don't do them. <laughs> you have to recognize them when they're coming up in your own history because we have these habits. And if we don't recognize them, they're so seductive because they do rest in our bodies. We, we will default to the protective value set in a heartbeat with very and you know exactly what it is you know all the pieces you bring them in they justify your behavior it works perfectly as a system because it has for years but it's not appropriate now it will kill us if we stay there so i keep going back and forth which is why i haven't lost the word value because that's a connection to that old system and maybe to do the others as values and these as patterns maybe that would be a way of of doing that, but the three really do live together. It's really hard for me to let those other two go, not because I like them or anything, but because they're here and we have to see them. We have to understand that when you pick loyalty, when you want to be loyal to something, you're willing to give up all this other crap and you're willing to do all these crappy things to make that value live. That's a signal. When you hit that value, you want to go, oh shit, I don't want to be here. <laughs> Let's reframe this conversation. It's not about survival. What is it about really? Is it about thriving? Then let's go here. You can have those conversations that you can't have without that understanding because those, those patterns are so subtle and we're so, so connected to them that until we can separate a little bit to see them, we have no power there. We're at the effect of them. Does that make sense? What you're saying makes sense. I, I, I question how it relates to the visual we're looking at. Well, this is one system of patterns that we live in and have yet to see and, and embody. I'm... I'm not interested in human centric patterns. I'm interested. These aren't human centric. There's nothing human centric about them at all. Zilch. Yeah, I'm. I'm not quite. I'm not quite getting. Well, well I think. I think what what I'm hearing Catherine say is like um, the current patterns that we have as humans are pretty deep seated, and it's going to be a while before we drop them. And part of that dropping. Um, maybe to to see them um, with the sort of one caveat for me is that by pointing to them we don't perpetuate them so it's like um, yeah. try trying to to potentially hold both the patterns that that do bring forth flourishing and to maybe contrast them with the patterns that we're typically expressing as humans at the moment only to know ourself or ourselves that we're not expressing the patterns that bring forward flourishing yet. And that we're in this intermediary phase of dropping old patterns and developing new ones. But when we fully get there, we won't need the old pattern recognition so much anymore or to, to use the word ethics so much anymore because we will have developed beyond that. And it's all to way. say, it might not like come up again in some shape or form, but for the period at least, the these values, the what brings forward flourishing in, in living systems will be embodied. And yeah. and if we are able to keep the storytelling around that, then yeah, potentially they will stay alive and informed and with enough consciousness and awareness that sort of uh, unhealthy ones don't creep in. And I think being able to see them in the world around us is really helpful. Yeah, totally. Because it does it does connect us. We we can validate that they're there. Totally. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I I still stumble over oh could could you I need... are you on the back? 
Yeah, would you put that back? Ah, I still stumble all over all creation, all actions, all actions create the conditions that support life. In every other living thing except us. That makes no sense whatsoever to me. Every other living thing. That's why nature works. That's the integrity We're of the living world. We're our nature. We. Yeah, except that, except that we're also us. And we have stepped out of nature. No, we we'll haven't. Step... I haven't. I have not stepped out of nature. Is our culture in nature? Uh, that's the That's the culture. No, it's that's a culture is a product of us. We make it. It doesn't exist without us. It's integral to me. Our, so our that, may be, that may be true for you. That's fine. I no argument about you as an individual person. This is bigger than you. Yes, we created the culture and the culture does inform and shape and all that stuff. So but, this is the culture we want. Integral. Our culture is not integral. That's right. We created it. We That's are right. And this culture is integral also. And we didn't create it, but we have stepped out of it and we need to step back into it. It is around us everywhere. You can see it. You can see in your experience, you can experience the fact that in a forest, everybody is doing, all the cells that live in that forest are doing their own thing. And the forest thrives because of it, because all of their actions create the conditions that support all of their lives. All actions in a forest create, yeah, if you put that, yeah. all actions in a forest, not all actions of human beings. All actions should including human beings, create the conditions that support life. Well, if we like did that. that, we would change our culture. Of course. But, yes, but that's the point. That's why I have difficulty with that statement. All actions create conditions. As well. I know, I know, because you keep saying people don't. And so people don't, that's not a true statement. I'm not saying people don't. I then who doesn't? We then do, who doesn't? We don't. Who doesn't? Why, why does it bother you? What doesn't create the actions that support life? Um, pouring acid on a, a fence that's got stuff growing on it. So who would do that? human for so you're reason. saying humans don't create actions that support life is that true humans do and don't okay and that's very different than all well life. should they do the actions that don't create life would that would you say that's a thing we should do they should not do actions that don't create. Okay. It, they should not do actions that destroy life. Okay. So should we say, could we say that humans should do all the actions humans do should support life? Could we say that? Well, I, I try never to use the word should. I mean, we, so, like, we can, but. So how would you phrase that? If you wanted all of human actions to create life, what? how would you say that? What would be the wording? I would hope that my actions support life. I I I intend. I I don't I'd I'd have to reflect on it. I mean it it's a very big <laughs> frame. It is. It's here. Very big. It is. And and I I but I do think it's important to call out all actions create the kid who who's doing the actions what are the actions i don't i know some actions that don't create conditions supportive to life and so you want to support those i want to change those 
So how do you do that? I do not do those. I so what language would you use? I would have to reflect on it like you have. So go ahead. I'm uh, I'm encouraging you to do that. So basically to change this statement, right? To to um, to say it in a way that you're comfortable with. Okay. I I I will take that on. But I have to reflect. 